Drone technology in the conflict between Ukraine and Russia is one area that is developing very fast indeed. There's hundreds of different types. The much longer range drones are bringing to the Russian public the conflict so that it's making it more difficult for Vladimir Putin to control the narrative. From my perspective, I see the drones falling into sort of four categories. The first category is commercial off the shelf. Um, the second category would be the, the kamikaze type drones, or in some cases they're called loitering munitions. And then you've got the slightly longer range drones, and they're the ones that are used by the Ukrainians to um, uh, attack Moscow. And then the final category, uh, which is very easy, it's the uncrewed surface vessels. Um, those sea drones that we're seeing, and they're easy to separate because uh, they go in the sea, the rest fly in the air. On the commercial drone side of things, virtually any com company that's making commercial drones, those drones are probably being used by both the Russians and the Ukrainians inside Ukraine uh, around the conflict. But the one set of drones that, um, and the one manufacturer that both sides are utilising are the Chinese DJI drones, the Mavic series and the FPV um, the FPV is one where you use a goggles, um, a first person view. You can watch it as it flies, as if you're uh, in the drone, and they will attach um, an explosive device to that and fly it into a train system or fly it into uh, an open hatch on a, a, a vehicle uh, where it explodes. The um, DJI Mavic series are used really for two things. Um, the first one is um, uh, observation so that uh, it can watch what's going on in the battlefield, quick reconnaissance, help adjust artillery fire or mortar fire and identify uh, enemy positions. And both the Ukrainians and the Russians use them. But also within the DJI series and, and other commercial drones that are of about that sort of size, they have adapted them with uh, the use of 3D printers to be able to take um, things that can hold grenades or small explosive devices that can be dropped again into trenches to kill uh, personnel or through the hatches of armoured vehicles to try and blow the vehicle up. Uh, and those are proving extremely successful indeed. Uh, I've seen some statistics to say that the Ukrainians are uh, using and losing up to 500 DJI drones a day. Um, but whenever you consider the differences in costs, um, you're dropping a $50 hand grenade from um, a $750 drone onto a um, $150,000 BMP-1 and destroying that, the economics work out um, very uh, successful for those that are successfully operating them. The other, the other big area that, that's really growing um, and is showing huge technological advances are the, the kamikaze drones. The three that um, are having significant impact on the, the, the battlefield are the Switchblade 300, which is a US supplied man portable um, small kamikaze drone um, which can go 10 miles. It's got a couple of kilograms of explosives in its warhead and can be launched um, from a, an individual person. Its bigger brother that can go up to about 25 miles and carries a much bigger warhead is the Switchblade 600 um, that, that is fired out of, out of the tube. And the Russian equivalent, which is having uh, real successes on the, on the battlefield, is the Lancet. Um, and the Lancet's got a range of about 25 miles. Again, it's got a, a warhead of about 15, 16 kilograms. Um, and uh, what they are effectively are lumps of explosives with the ability to fly around for a period of time and either through operator use or through being pre-programmed where targets are, um, they then um, dive in on those targets. And the Lancet, the warhead on that is specifically designed um, to penetrate um, armor. Uh, and the top armor on even main battle tanks is a lot thinner than the side armor or the frontal plate armor. And it'll attack in from the top um, and therefore destroy the tanks. And we've seen pictures of Leopard 2s, the um, German ma manufactured European supplied tanks to Ukraine being destroyed by Lancets. The final one that I'll talk about, but it also fits into another category of a longer range drone, is the Iranian supplied Shahad 136 or 131. And they're fired out in swarms. Um, they are um, relatively inexpensive to make. They've got a 50 kilogram warhead. Um, which causes uh, a lot of damage whenever 
they dive into targets. But the Shahad 136 flies relatively slow. Um, it's um, quite easy for the Ukrainian air defense systems to pick it up and to shoot it down. The Lancets, the Switchblades, um, are, are much more difficult for the air defense systems to pick up and to shoot down. The next category are the longer range drones. But we're now seeing more recently um, the Ukrainians targeting um, Moscow um, and targeting um, Sevastopol in Crimea, um, much longer range uh, uh, drones that are needed in that. And uh, those, th those sites are being targeted from either special operations executive type individuals very close to the target using the little commercial drones that are there, but also what we're seeing are the much longer range drones, drones that can fly um, a thousand kilometers and carry um, you know, 80 to 100 uh, kilograms of, of explosives that are going in. They are more like light aircraft than anything else. And a lot of them look like light aircraft. Um, and within that, we've got you know, the, the, the Russians use the, the Kronstadt Orion um, is, is their version. Uh, the Ukrainians um, have uh, from one of their manufacturing companies, the Aerodrome, they've, they've got the Enterprise. And the Enterprise um, you, carries between an 80 kilogram and 300 kilogram warhead uh, between 1,000 and 3,000 kilometers. And that's likely to be the sort of drone that is being used to attack Moscow. It's very difficult to confirm these things because the pictures that we see tend to be taken from mobile phones or very grainy. And there are so many different types being manufactured out there. And the Ukrainians are keeping their manufacturing um, very close hold. Um, and that's, that's understandable. But these longer range drones are bringing to the Russian public um, the conflict so that it's making it more difficult for Vladimir Putin to control the narrative, and that's why they're using those to attack. Um, the Russians, um, I'll go back to the Shahad 136 and the 131, the Ukrainian kamikaze drone, they tend to launch those with their cruise missiles and their ballistic missiles. Those drones are used to try and overwhelm the um, Ukrainian air defense systems um, where they're firing their guns and their missiles at those and hoping that the cruise missiles will then get through to get their targets. Um, uh, because they fly uh, at a relatively fixed height and um, slower than the, than the cruise missiles. It's all down to drone tactics, which are being developed as much as drone technology. The one new area are these uncrewed surface vehicles that are causing real consternation with the Russians, in particular in the Black Sea Fleet. They lost the capital ship, um, the Moskova, last year, and they've lost um, or had severely damaged a couple of other ships um, just recently. Um, and these uncrewed surface vehicles are effectively just little boats. Um, they're boats with a camera on them, um, with a communications capability on them, um, and a big explosive warhead in them. Um, and the one that we see a lot of, um, and we've seen a lot of pictures of, is this black five-meter-long boat that uh, is the TLK-150 um, that the Ukrainians have developed. And they're developing a number of others. And that's the one that we see speeding up to uh, and, and hitting the sides of of Russian ships. They can move at 50 kilometers an hour in the water, which is quite fast in the water, but it's not fast whenever um, the uh, Russians can start shooting at them. But because they're so low down in the water, they will hide in the clutter um, of the waves and everything else. So it's very difficult for the Russians to detect these drones coming in until they're, they're very close indeed. And then they have to be uh, very alert with the weapons pointing in the right direction, manned and ready to go to be able to interdict them. The Russians are having more success at stopping them um, than the drones are getting through. But again, they are a quarter of a million dollars each, approximately. Um, and whenever it's taking out a ship that um, is, is costing tens of millions of dollars, um, that is you know, good economics. And it has changed the patrol patterns of the Russian Black Sea Fleet. They tend to be much closer into uh, Russian-controlled uh, waters um, and are not coming out and threatening uh, the ships that are going into the U Ukrainian ports. Um, these uncrewed um, surface vehicles can travel uh, over 250 kilometres um, uh, in what they're doing. And it looks as if the Ukrainians are now starting to work out how they can swarm them into different places. Um, the Russians have built massive defences around uh, their ports with booms and other things to stop drones getting into the ports. Uh, and under the Kirch Bridge, because... Uh, there was some discussion that the last attack on the Kirch Bridge that's connecting Crimea to Russia, um, that that came from 
um, a drone um, in the sea. And the Russians have now put a lot of anti-drone capability around to stop um, any vessels getting underneath that uh, that roadway and that railway where they could potentially threaten it.